my name is Christopher Colombo, and I sail in the ocean blue all across the world. I'm a finding trees in Europe, and I'm a bringing them to the Americas, and I'm a taking the trees from the Americas and taking them over to Europe and Asia and all parts of the world. And my little Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Everybody, I didn't fool you with that one. This is Gary Walker, better known as the Tree Whisperer. Now, behind me is a gigantic Phoenix canariensis, otherwise known commonly as the Canary Island Pine. And I'm gonna tip my hat to this tree. This is the granddaddy of all trees, the king of kings. It is the world's most expensive tree. Now this gigantic one, this is a ginormous one. This might be in the $20,000, $25,000 range. You'd have to have a crane, etc. So we're gonna fix this tree up today. Uh, we're gonna redo the crown, that little round ball you see up there that's commonly called the pineapple. And uh, there's a lot of loose husks up there, so we'll get those off. We'll reshape the pineapple. We'll get the, the dead fronds off the bottom and then the seed pods out of the middle. Now, to do this properly, because Phoenix canariensis palms or Canary Island pines, palms, which are endemic to the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa, uh, have been hit with a fatal um, blight or wilt lately. It's called Fusarium wilt. Uh, it is a lethal fungus. There's no known cure for it. So in order to um, help mitigate you know, the spread of that, and it's supposedly commonly done through um, tainted tools. So we either use new tools like this, or we take a little bleach, a little Clorox bleach, and we'll uh, wash our tools down and any other implements that touch the tree. So that sanitizes it. So, but that brings up a good issue about you know palm maintenance, palm health. So we want to keep our eyes out for any symptoms, anything that looks odd, and any tree that we're working on. So we're just going to be cautious and go the extra mile and sterilize all of our tools before we work on this canary palm and actually any canary palm. That's just standard operating procedure for me. So uh, I'm going to hit the high C's right now. We're going to get to work on this. And then later in this video, I'll show you a palm that is actually infected with uh, Fusarium wilt, so you can A-B it. It's always good to see this side and that side of any issue. Then you can make your own informed uh, judgment. So we're getting to work right now. We'll see you later. Hi, everybody. We're back on the scene here. We finished working on this huge, magnificent uh, Canary Island palm here. You can see a huge difference up in the crown there. So we made a little pineapple. We didn't want to take a whole lot of green out of it, only the dead and all the orange seed pods are now gone and uh, the tree is all set up. We took all the old house, there were like three or four feet of old house, they're all gone now and so the tree is straightened up and it'll look good for you know two, three, four years at least. So uh, I better get back to work, enjoy the tree. Let's get real. Now we got a problem here that I need to talk about. I ain't gonna work for food today. I'm not jiving you. I'm working for this tree. Let's put that down and I ain't gonna be no clown. Check this beautiful tree out here. This is the granddaddy of all trees. This is the king, the queen of palms. This is the palm of palms. This is the royal palm. It's called the Phoenix Canary Palm. And it is endemic to the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. You know, the canary, the little yellow bird that they put in the coal mine. Well, this is the Phoenix Canary Palm, the most expensive tree on planet Earth. Something like this might run $15,000. The only problem is this tree is not only sick, it's got a fatal sickness. This tree has what is known as Fusarium. So go ahead and Google that, Fusarium. It's a lethal, non-curable virus that attacks specifically this type of tree. So. In Southern California, over the last number of years, many thousands of these trees have had to be removed. I've removed not a few of them myself. They're very expensive to remove. They're very heavy. They have to be taken to a special portion of the dump. You don't want to grind them up or chip them up and put this contaminated uh, debris mixed in with mulch that people would then spread on their yard. That'd be really bad. So you can tell that the bottom part of this tree is brown, the fronds. And with Fusarian, the telltale sign is down the spine of the frond, one half will be kind of green-yellow, the other half will be yellow-brown. That's kind of a classic symptom. This one's been dying a slow death. Uh, I've been 
telling the owner about it now for a while. Hopefully, they're going to want to get rid of it so that, you know, birds can transfer the disease as well from tree to tree. So you want to get rid of diseased trees for many reasons, one of which you just don't want to spread that to your neighborhood and then cause other people's trees to unnecessarily die out. So this is Gary Walker, the tree whisperer, and I'm panhandling. Whoa, whoa, it's so hot here. I'm having to cool myself off with a little man-made rain shower. Because it's like I'm walking in the jungle in the rainforest here. In fact, I might even try to squirt Nate, but I better not. Because he's got his $5,000 iPhone. So I'm going to put this hose down right now. This is Gary, the hose whisperer. All right. So this is what we're going to do now. Down. This is like a snake. Ah. Ah. All right. So a lot of times when I do gardens, I will plant certain types of flowers to attract certain types of uh, winged creatures or certain types of plants that will produce certain types of seeds that will then attract certain types of birds. So in this case, this one's called the butterfly bush or Buddleia. It grows all over the country in uh, mild climates here in Southern California and also in really tough, cold climates back east. And uh, they put out these large conical beautiful flowers that you know monarchs and zebra swallowtails love i grew up in miami as a kid which is you know just fabulous it's beautiful it's kind of like a rainforest in and of itself in coral gables so i always built tree forts and went into the woods and you know built huts out there and collected pine cones and then used the thorny end of uh, uh from palm trees and made swords and me and my other guy friends we'd have mock battles and all that typical kid stuff so, but I remember growing up with all kinds of exotic, beautiful flowers. So I've loved plants and flowers all my life. That's why I'm now called Guido, the tree whisperer. So anyway, so we're back to the Buddleia, the butterfly bush. Butterflies love these bushes. So they come here, they hang out, they stick their little things in there and they get all the food they want. Now, in terms of pruning, so you see this has a central one and then two flanking ones. So, so you pinch off the middle one, energy goes here, you get real pretty ones. Now. Let's zoom down to this gigantic disc here. Now, this kind of, let me just stand on this thing. This kind of looks like a spaceship. I mean, like something you might have seen on Independence Day, you know, something the size of, you know, a city and it comes over, it's gigantic. But really what this is, is the stump from a really big Phoenix canariensis palm tree that I had to remove for the owner because it had that fatal disease, Fusarium that we talked about earlier. So this will give you some idea of really how big these things get. So we had to cut this in sections, throw it on the truck, take it to the dump. It was many, many tons worth of debris. Had to be thrown away in a garbage portion because we don't want to contaminate this with good greenery that they mulch up and then either give away or sell. So that's what these things look like when you cut them down. Now, we're gonna kind of go over here now. So. This is a pomegranate, a fruiting pomegranate. Love the pomegranate. It's particularly prized over in the east. Certain cultures like certain fruit trees. Um, this one's really pretty. They put off the nice big fruit in a little while. Lots of seeds, but people love them. They're fabulous. Now here's another butterfly bush or buddleia right here. So uh, just some of the many flowers. Maybe you can zoom in again on that beautiful purple-throated, um, I forgot the name, I forgot more names than I know. In, in fact, look at that gorgeous thing there. And looky here, look, we actually have some little fruits coming on here, some little pomegranates there. So in time, those things will get nice and big and kind of have that reddish-orange, beautiful look. Even just as ornaments, they're fabulous, but when you cut them up and you eat them, mmm, yummy. Gotta get to work.